What's going on guys, Justin here from It's Actually Science and today I'm coming at you with a video about Blue Heron Bridge in Riviera Beach, Florida. Blue Heron Bridge is one of the best places to snorkel or scuba dive in the US. And here you can see there's a little goby that we found. So here we've got an arrow crab. These guys are super cool. They're all over the place at Blue Heron Bridge. And of course there's all kinds of fish everywhere. There's parrotfish, angelfish, stingrays, barracuda, lionfish, sea robins, lizardfish, and a whole host of others. Blue Heron Bridge really does have a large diversity of marine species. And of course this is largely due to the fact that Blue Heron Bridge actually sits in the intercoastal and the current flows into the intercoastal in such a way that it brings a bunch of nutrients along with it to feed the animals that call this place home. And of course people have also put large rocks, sunken boats, and other structures in this area to act as artificial reefs. <laughs> and here you can see I spooked a flounder. And there are lots of echinoderms at Blue Heron Bridge, though some days you may see more than others. Echinoderms include sea stars, sea cucumbers, and sea urchins. This is of course a sea star. Right there in the center of its arms is actually where its mouth is located. They actually evert their stomach out of that mouth opening and surround whatever prey item they are hunting and actually secrete digestive enzymes which digest the organism before they slurp it all back inside. The water is of course more clear on some days than others. And here was a clear day where we actually were able to find a upside down jellyfish. And this species of jellyfish actually sits on the bottom upside down as it filters for its prey. And we actually found an octopus, which was super, super cool. You do find these guys at Blue Heron Bridge every once in a while. Octopuses are the most intelligent of the invertebrates. That being said, they actually are able to open jars and solve little puzzles and things, which is pretty neat. They actually have a hard beak on the underside in the middle of all of their arms, and anything that their beak can fit through, their entire body can fit through. Yeah, I tried touching it a little bit and it inked and freaked me out a little bit, which is what it's supposed to do. And I found another octopus, which is pretty sweet. As you can see, this one was a larger individual. Such fascinating creatures. And I did take a sample of the water and some plant matter and some dirt that was there at Blue Heron Bridge so I could take a look at it under the microscope, of course. So here we've got a nematode, and these are pretty ubiquitous, you find them all over the place. Salt water, fresh water, dirt, moss. There are many species of nematodes. Some are actually parasitic, but this one is free living. And an interesting thing about nematodes is that they, they are worms, but not like an earthworm like you would think of when you hear the word worm. They have a worm body plan, just a very long tube basically. One of the things that separates nematodes from annelids like earthworms and polychaetes are that they actually don't have circular muscles, they only have longitudinal muscles, which is why they wriggle back and forth and can't contract and slink along like an earthworm can. This is a gastropod, or snail, that I found in the sample that I took. This was pretty neat. I found a whole bunch of single-celled organisms, I believe they're ciliates, around this dirt particle. It's interesting because it seems like there's a barrier, and I believe that this barrier is actually an oxygen gradient, where all the ciliates have clumps together because this zone seems to be oxygen-rich. Here's another spot where I saw this same phenomenon.
and in dark field, of course, which is basically just when the light shines around a black patch stop and shines from the sides onto the sample rather than directly through the sample, as is what happens in bright field microscopy. Here's why I believe it's an oxygen layer. It's actually because you can see these air bubbles here, which are the really bright halos toward the top of the screen. This is a copepod, a type of crustacean. That little red spot on its head is an eye spot or a photoreceptor. Now they're not able to see like we're able to see, but they can actually sense the presence of light. And they do have a digestive tract, which is what you can see moving in the center of the organism there, kind of a goldish brown color. I was able to photograph this female with eggs. This is actually very common to see egg sacs on a female. And this is in bright field, a little bit closer up. This is another crustacean called an amphipod, and you actually do find these in freshwater as well. You can see it looks a lot more like a shrimp than the copepod does, and of course the shrimp is a crustacean as well, though very different from either the copepod or the amphipod. Here in the center of the screen is a shell or test of a foraminiferin, which is a type of amoeboid protist. It is a single-celled organism, and of course this one's just a shell, it's not actually the living organism, unfortunately. There are many different types of foraminiferins. This one has a very spiral shape, which follows the Fibonacci sequence, and if you don't know what the Fibonacci sequence is, you should definitely go check it out. It's a really cool sequence of numbers that actually appear over and over in nature. And then this is another type of foraminiferin shell. As you can see, it's very different from the other one, and there are other ones that are even more different than this one as well. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And if you've never checked out Blue Heron Bridge, you should definitely go check it out. It is definitely worth your time. I'll see you guys on the next adventure.